I'm not. <laughs> All right. Shall we uh, open the Belvedere City Council uh, meeting, regular uh, meeting of March 18, 2024? Uh, we'll call that meeting to order, please. Albertini? Here. Brereton? Brereton is absent. Flurry? Here. Frank? Here. Freeman? Here. Gramkowski? Here. McGee? Here. Mulhall? Here. Snow? Here. Stevens? Here. Nine present. Okay, if you'll uh, join me and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, we pray to thank you for our country, our families, our community, and our freedom. Lord, we thank you for our current military service members and for our, all the men, men and women veterans who have served and sacrificed throughout our nation's history. We ask that you bless them and their families. And tonight, Lord, we give thanks for our police and fire first responders in our community and throughout our country who bravely serve our citizens no matter what the call, and we pray for their safety and well-being. We pray for guidance this evening and that you give each of us compassion, patience, understanding, courage, and wisdom as we conduct our city's business here. We pray for these things in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, tonight we have uh, three, I think, registered for public comment. Uh, first, uh, we have John Albertini. John? Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Most of you know me, but in case you don't, my name's John Albertini. I live here in Belvedere. The subject I'm speaking about tonight is uh, the trash pickup we're working on. I received a couple of calls and one intense text. Um, I don't know how to word it, but one 78-year-old gentleman says he's had the same garbage as far as he can remember, and he didn't understand why somebody was going to tell him who to use. Um, he asked that we can try to, and I don't know whether this is possible, that we can have a public hearing on this matter, being it affects the whole city. Um, I think before we vote on this and force this on the city or on the people of the city, that we try to do this. I mean, history dictates that we're going to try to have a public hearing. The seats will be empty, but at least we did our due diligence to try to be courteous to our citizens instead of just telling them what to do. Uh, the reason I base this on is um, a while back I had asked about how my park looked where I live at Four Seasons and how nice it looked and why the city couldn't look like that. And it was told to me that, well, the city can't tell the residents, like the park can, what to do. Well, if that's the case, then why are we telling them to get garbage? So I'd like to postpone the next week's vote on it and call for a uh, public hearing on the matter first so that at least if citizens did want to voice their opinion, we could hear from them. Um, that's all I have to say on the subject. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, next, we have Al Alderman Fleury. Thank you, Mayor. I also am talking about the uh, trash pickup. I had a few citizens contact me. Uh, some weren't able here to come tonight, so they asked that I would just uh, speak on their behalf and ask a couple of questions. Um, the first one just being, um, you know, that they just weren't aware that that was happening, that, you know, why it's happening so quickly. And as they talk to their neighbors, you know, not obviously not everyone watches the, the city council meetings, but they talked to their neighbors, they were unaware of it, and the more they found out about it, the more they were less than thrilled about it. So, um, 
you know, just wanted to know why it was so quick. And I, you know, try to explain the, the process that we will have a first reading tonight and then we'll have a committee meeting and then we'll, it'll be two weeks. So there actually will be some time for some citizens to come out and if they are concerned to, you know, please come down, whether they're for it or against it. That way, uh, as a council, we can hear, you know, what their concerns are and, um, you know, know what to do going forward. Uh, but some of the specific questions they had and just wanted to get those out there so we could get that in the uh, RFIs as we're looking at this contract and going further. Um, but one of their questions was, you know, the biggest problem is what if there's a problem with their garbage and their service? Who do they contact? How is that resolved? You know, currently, if you're not happy with your service, you know, you can obviously call. And if you're still unhappy, you can cancel that service and get another one. So what do you do when that option is taken away from you? Uh, the second question is um, in regards to this current, the one particular citizen, uh, the way it works is they live here in the city, but the kids live out of town, but they've worked out a deal with uh, a trash company that they can get a discounted rate because they're all using the same service. Um, so what happens to that rate if they're forced to have one and their other kids on another one, now their rate's gonna go up even though they're out in the county and it doesn't affect us as a city, we can't control that, but just that ability to kind of, I guess, kind of bundle their services. What can they do about that? Uh, then also, um, you know, some companies require that you have to use paper sacks for uh, yard waste. Others let you use a garbage can as long as you put an X through it that you know it's yard waste. So um, with the current company that they're proposing with Rock River Disposal, what's their yard waste policy? Is it possibly use cans still, or does it have to be bags, or uh, what's going on with that? And then the last thing they're concerned with is just kind of the process to stop one service and start a new one. So they currently have, and I'm sure most people do have automatic, automatic bills coming out that come out on a certain time of the month, you know, when's it gonna change over, and then how does that new service pick up? So I'm sure some of these are maybe easily answered right now or, or later, but you know, kind of be researched, but I think just a lot of citizens just have more concerns because they're telling them it's going to be this company where if, when you're calling and doing your own research, um, no different than when I, you know, moved back to the city, I just called the three people that are, were around and we took the cheapest one and we stay with them because they've continued to be the cheapest. So that was, you know, my decision as consumer. So just wanted to pass on some of those questions and some of the concerns of some of my constituents. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And uh, we have this evening here um, Sherry Branson. Ms. Branson. Good evening. Thank you. I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. Um, I, I, as many of you know, I serve on the county board, and I, in the past, was on the county board and the Health and Human Services Committee and the Board of Health. And I learned a lot about problems with our aquifers and the risk when Great Lakes Basin Railroad was trying to come through town back in about 2016. And things have not gotten better. Um, if you look at this map that I left around here, I, I'm going to have to two things. And I'm going to be back to go into that in more in depth at, at additional meetings. But I'm after two things. I want to protect our recharge areas so that we don't contaminate our water supply because we're high risk. The IEPA designated that we are sensitive for groundwater protect, protect. I'm sorry, sensitive for groundwater contamination, and that we are to be prioritized for groundwater protection um, because of our geology. Our soils are different in this county than. The, the rest of the state. We're within one of four regions throughout the entire state that have that designation. And the other thing I want to do is I want to get three-dimensional mapping done so that we know where aquifers actually are. They've never been mapped in this county. And the reason this is important, and, and the county board has asked me to go around and, and see if I can drum up support from various townships. The reason it's important is if you look at this map that I left on your desk, and I'm sorry this did not make it into your packet. I just got it Friday night. But if you look at the very top of it, on your far left is Winnebago County. The next square over is Boone County. And you see that little, that finger-like projection there? That, is, that shows the impact on our aquifers from the way we are doing our development 
in Boone and Winnebago County. And the closer you get down to where this real dark red is, that's, that's down in Will County, down by Joliet, that's what's called a cone of depression. And the aquifer has dropped over 800 feet. Now I wanna stress, we are not at critical stages in our county yet. But we have to start working on this because it takes about two years to get all of the studies back so that we know how, what we need to do and then do modeling to show where the flow would go. And in the meantime, we can be working on changing our best practices methods and tweaking them and developing policies and procedures that can help to protect us. Um, if you'll notice in, in this little finger like, you know, it, it should be the darker blue and it's turning into the lighter blue. And there's not a lot of colors in here before it gets into the, the red as you go <coughs> south. Um, so this I think is just a good, a good visual. It's a good visual tool to see what we're up against. And right now we're not in the critical stage. We can fix this. And we can um, look at where we're doing our land use planning so that we're not overbuilding on risky soils. We can shift them to other soils. And I've reached out to the State Geological Survey Division, and they're working to help me to create a plan to come back here um, in a couple meetings to give you some ideas and suggestions about what we can be doing differently. But in the meantime, I'm hoping to get support for getting started on the modeling. Um, because the State Geological Survey Division can fly over the counties and just do Winnebago or Boone County. It's about half a million, just under half a million, and that would give us really, really good mapping. Um, and so we can, we know what we're up against, and we need that data to really do this right. And we can have the growth, we can protect our aquifers from contamination because your recharge areas are the same as high risk contamination areas and we can do this smart and so you can get your cake and eat it too that's the gist but we need to get started on this and i and i'll go into more in depth with you at other meetings um if you want to give me a call i can meet with you and i can go over your packets and that will explain a lot without eating a lot of board time okay any any okay um, i think marcia has got something yes Thank you, Mayor. So um, you're going to be asking us for funding on this? It's, it's complicated. Funding is always complicated. Well, I've got three different sources that are reaching out trying to find grants. In your packet, I've included a copy of what the county got for ARPA funding. And the county is also wanting to, it, to expand a lot of buildings because we're bursting at the seams. Um, so they want to put a lot of money into these expansions. And so this project is on that ARPA funding wish list for the county. But the county has also instructed me to ask other town uh, municipalities it, what they can kick in or if they can kick in. And I understand that not everybody can, but I'm told to ask. So, so th that's what I was looking at. Um, you guys in the county, I think... I mean, I'm all for this mapping and, you know, how it's described in this packet is like an MRI of the earth, mm -hmm. right? Which is great, and it, it, it's past time for it, I believe. But I, to me, this is a county thing, and when I looked at you guys' ARPA um, funding, you guys still have, like, over as, well, I mean, the new quarterly report was due in January, um, but at, the, at this time, you still had... Seven million six hundred eighty thousand dollars left. Actually, Isn't, wasn't ARPA funding supposed to be used by a specific date? You have until the end of the year to allot it for what it's going to be, and that number has dropped because other things have come out of that. If you look at the top of that, that is the ARP or the ARPA letter from November. It's down to about six million, and so the county wants to put some into that, or they want to put a lot of it into the building issue. I also want them to try and put some of it into this as well. And I am one vote out of 12. We'll, we'll see what happens. I, I understand. Like, I think that um, this would be a good use of some of those ARPA funds, just so the county board's aware. I, I don't disagree. 
I don't disagree, but my instructions were to, to talk to the municipality, see what I can do, see if I can found, find grants for it. And I've reached out to Soil and Water, I've reached out to the Conservation District. They're searching for grants. I've taken it to the county's grant writer. She's searching for them. And we searched for them when I was on the board back in 16, 17. And we searched in depth. We even had our one searching and we did not find any. And we, we applied for some and we just didn't get them. So it, it's a work in progress. Thank you. It, it's a work in progress. But again, if you call me, I'll talk to you over the phone or I'll meet you and I can explain in 15 minutes your packet that'll take you, you know, umpteen hours to read through and give you the cliff note version. And, and my number is 815-601-2356. Any other questions? Anybody else? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Thank Branson. You. Thank you. Um, in your packet, uh, just to make sure, uh, Ms. Branson did approach me regarding um, regarding the information. I wanted you to have it, so it is, it is in your packet. Uh, I assume when she comes back, she will be referencing uh, that material. So if you keep it uh, maybe close by, uh, that would be good. Uh, I've also got, a, I forgot to tell you, I've got an email back from Jason Thompson of the State Geological Survey Division. Okay. And he's looking for information on Lake Michigan. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, uh, I believe that's all we have for public comment. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item 4A, uh, we have approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Bellevue City Council uh, of March 4, 2024, as presented. If I could have a motion uh, to that effect, please. Motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Stevens. Thank you. Uh, if there's any corrections, any concerns regarding those minutes uh, that you have in front of you, uh, speak up. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the approval of the minutes of March 4, 2024, please signify by saying aye. 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 And if there's any opposed, motion passed, thank you. Item five, public hearing, we have none. Item six, special, excuse me, special messages and proclamations. We have uh, Growth Dimensions, Pam Fennis is here this evening. Pam, welcome. Thank you for your time this mm -hmm. evening. Um, in front of you, I shared um, some new you know, data that we wanted to put in a different, uh, presented a little bit different, um, hopefully more clear about the impact. We did some time after time. So um, since the beginning of uh, this year, we've had almost 200 uh, contacts. Um, we've had uh, 61 new business projects in the pipeline, 56 um, that are existing projects in the pipeline. And we broke it up based on the phase, and this was similar to what we had talked about last year. And if you want me to, we can add um, what those were. Stage one is really that uh, initial contact, um, and uh, stage two is more your meeting, due diligence. Uh, stage three, they've made a commitment or in construction phase. So I wanted to share with you um, that breakdown. Um, our, also, our website visits um, from January 1st um, to date um, in comparison from 2024 to 2023, you can see how many visits that we've had already this year has exceeded last year's amount um, and um, the web page views as well. Uh, our project referral sources, just a little breakdown of where we get our initial contact from the uh, projects. Um, we get primarily most of them uh, from the business or business representatives, meaning site selectors or accountants or lawyers that are representing these businesses. Um, others might be, um, could be the schools, um, uh, higher education, could be the airport, could be other um, resources. We have municipalities on government, and then we have the broker as well as on the state in Intersect Illinois, which is the uh, marketing arm for Illinois. 
Um, and just some of the highlights of these projects that we've been working on since um, I didn't want to kind of repeat from uh, last month, so I've just shared with you some new information. Project Apollo, a high-tech manufacturer that's interested in a spot in the U.S. This is a $900 million um, uh, investment as well as 900 jobs. We are working with Sky Label Logistics that is looking to have a, a very aggressive uh, expansion project uh, in Illinois for their uh, logistics company. Um, and then we have Project Z um, that is looking at opportunities in Boone County for retail location. Um, we also have another project that's looking at consumer manufacturing consumer goods, uh, another one biopharmaceutical company, and then we also have um, a you know a company that was out of uh, Poplar Grove has now uh, secured a location on Business 20, um, and they're enhancing location for landscape, garden, and retail facility, um, and that's Arte Verde. And I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> um, Fiesta Market is also looking to upgrade the refrigeration systems and their process of applying for loans and uh, through the state and as well as grants. Um, and also working with the city on Wing Snob. Um, and uh, there's also a number of restaurant franchises that we've been speaking to about a location in Belvedere and Poplar Grove. Um, some other projects um, that we've, you know, had secure and we're working with, um, many of you know, MRS, Walmart Perishable Distribution Center, Five Binds Brewery, um, Club Car Wash, Johnny Pancakes, and Dunkin' Donuts. Um, we're also um, helping planning and executing a conference, an expo called the ACE Conference. Um, on May 23rd at the Embassy Suites in Rockford. And we're looking to provide existing and aspiring entrepreneurs with resources in order to start and grow their businesses. So a lot of businesses go out of business in the first two years, and our goal is to give them what the resources they need in order to stay in business and flourish. Um, following that will be a ceremony um, for the Iger Labs Innovation Award. <clears throat> so we'll be uh, sharing more information as it comes. And then um, we're also working with four landowners and investors on um, potentials uh, and opportunities here in Boone County. And a lot of the emphasis was on retail and uh, housing. So I wanted to kind of share those, that detail. Uh, any questions for <coughs> Ms. Fettis? Uh, Alderman Freeman? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share um, Site Selection Magazine is an international industry leading business publication and it has released its annual corporate expansion and relocation rankings, um, naming Illinois number two in the nation for corporate projects. Um, the state ranks number two in the nation for corporate expansions and relocations for the second year in a row with 552 business expansions or relocation projects in 2023 up from 487 in 2022. And Illinois also placed number two in projects per capita, up from number four the previous year. So um, <clears throat> the, um, let me get to where I need to be. To qualify, uh, projects must meet one or more of these criteria, investments of a million or more, creation of 20 or more new jobs, or 20,000 square feet or more of new space. So um, with your help, Belvedere has certainly added to and helped Illinois um, achieve this ranking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Have Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Moving on, uh, we have, uh, do we have anybody from the library? Uh, yeah, we do. Mr. Rivolo, how are you? Good, how are you? This Welcome. Should With the library. Yes, should I stay where I live? No. Stay where I live? You don't have no. Okay. Just who you represent. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Rivolo. I'm here on the behalf of the Idaho Public Library. For the programs, uh, spring program guide is out, a lot of exciting programs. All programs are free to anyone that 
but requires some registration in advance. The pamphlet's out in front of everyone, hopefully. I didn't miss anybody. Our annual Peeps uh, Diorama contest starts this week. Anyone can create a Peeps display and drop it off at the library starting March 20th, and the public will vote for the winners who will receive a prize. The, fr <coughs> the Friends of the Library worked of getting us grants from the Boone County Community Foundation to funding code bots for children. We now have, have 10 of these that will be used in the coding programs. We also received a grant from the Boone County Home of H People and Bevelevent Association towards providing services, materials for elderly. These funds will be used to purchase large print paperbacks to our bookmobile. We will visit the assisted living and retirement homes in the town and many residents have asked these paperbacks instead of hard cover books that we currently have. They're not as heavy and they're easier to see as well. So some of these funds will also be used for small drop boxes in our assisted living. And the bookmobile will begin requesting materials to be delivered to the facilities. A one team member will deliver them at our usual stops. The drop boxes will be placed in a facility for residents to return materials and drop in request forms and our team will empty them during the visit and saving time for the staff at the facility. And also the special needs from the BHS will be begin volunteering for work at the library for the next month. They will be dusting once a week, cleaning tables and organizing and, uh, and other things. We have uh, three new short-term workers from workforce. They will perform all regular duties of circulation clerk from their contract term. And also for our maintenance, is uh, our water software went out and we had to replace it and the cost was $1,400. We also had, uh, we sprung a new leak in the sprinkler system downstairs in the public restrooms. Nelson came out for the merchant repair, a total of $1,900. <coughs> Nelson advised that we either replace entire piping in the new section of the building or plan on budgeting for the repairs for every year for the next five years. It will seem inferior materials we are, were using everything in the beginning to rust. We are not the only ones with issues. It seems to be common with the systems installed in the 80s. And also uh, local artist uh, Brett Whitaker will be painting new murals in our children's department this week. Brent was born and raised in Belvedere and is a well-known artist a mural painter. Some of the children's areas may be closed off while he paints to, uh, to ask uh, staff for assistance. And that's, hopefully I didn't go fast for anybody. If not, I can always go back and repeat everything. <laughs> that's my update from the library. Okay, any, any questions for Mr. Rivolo? Okay, I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Daniel, appreciate it. Okay. We have item seven, moving on, approval of expenditures. Uh, first, we have ex uh, approval of general and special fund expenditures in the amount of $2,482,545 and 76 cents. Those have been included in your packet, and could I have a motion to accept these? Motion by Alderman McGee, second by Alderwoman Mohal, thank you. Uh, any questions uh, regarding the expenditures? Alderwoman Freeman? Thank you again. So um, I have, I guess, some for everyone. Um, Starting with um, the general on page two, the CTEC data solutions um, for cameras at City Hall, was this included in our um, new security upgrade? That was a, the security upgrade, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, for Chief Woody, page 10. Uh, the KP Counseling LTD for the wellness checks for $1,540. Is any of that um, reimbursable at all through insurance? No, because technically these are not uh, medical evaluations. 
They're simply just wellness checks where the officers go in and they're able to talk about uh, whatever is on their mind at the time. And it's not uh, associated with any type of diagnosis which would be required for insurance. Thank you. Um, that's all I had for you, Chief. Um, Chief Shadel, page 15. Oh, I did have one more for you. I'm sorry, Chief Woody. Um, I don't know why it's not on here. Oh, page 13, um, the Kunis. There's a lot on there. Um, LOF, is that oil changes and tune-ups? Because I like, when do we do tune-ups and oil changes? Yes, it's lube, oil, and filter. So it's the uh, oil, the filter, and then any uh, lubrication that they have to do. Okay, but we don't do like spark plugs and distributors and those types of tune-ups? Yes, ma'am, as needed. Okay, thank you. I was just wondering what the LOF was for. Okay, Sean, page 15, um, the city of Rockford that is under repairs and maintenance for ongoing maintenance for $21,333.69. Yep, so to explain that one, the easiest way to explain it is anything that our street department can't do, we have Rockford Fire do it. And so they have a garage and they have uh, full-time staff that only work on fire engines. And their rates are very favorable compared to commercial rates. And then the second thing about it is um, they're very, very fair with hours. Like if, if something oftentimes they spend more time diagnosing stuff than they actually bill for so um, that's the advantage of, of working with them and one of the reasons why we chose a pierce engine is that their fear or fleet is pierce and so now they'll have a lot of parts on hand and repairs will be faster for um, the new 101 that we purchased in, in general there so the reason why there's two reasons why that bill is, is high. And part of that is some of those parts were actually ordered last fiscal year. And so some of these repairs, so it's really, um, it's about a year and a half of what they had found. So every year they go in for the pump test and the aerial test, and then they find any deficiencies and then they mark them down and then they have to be repaired. A lot of that, not a lot of it, but some of it started last year and they just didn't bill for it as well and last year i looked up we were um, 14,000 under budget and repair and maintenance and part of that was because some of this uh, would have normally been billed last year but they just kept the ticket open and then billed all at once and if anybody is interested in seeing a detailed uh, breakdown of that invoice or has any further questions i'd be definitely happy to email it to you thank you um, I guess that's all I had for you specifically. Um, I do have one for, and I'm not sure who answers this, the Police and Fire Commission um, on page 18. There are, um, I guess it's the, the law, law enforcement sergeant um, test, and then there are <clears throat> captain and lieutenant promotional exams. And those total um, upwards of $16,500. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about where that money goes and why it costs so much to promote people? Well, I can speak on behalf of the police department, and I, th I think the fire department's uh, fairly similar. Uh, we use a testing service uh, to uh, um, maintain objectivity and uh, give the uh, uh, not only appearance, but actual, uh, um, uh, so uh, it, there isn't any favoritism. Uh, and it's a independent contractor through Cops and uh, Fire Testing Service. And ultimately, they come in and they provide the written examination. They proctor that. And then they also, also do a oral examination with all of the uh, applicants as well. Uh, they bring in their own um, command personnel to evaluate each of the potential candidates and then there's obviously an associated charge with that okay so you don't really have um, 
say in who gets promoted? It's not your call, it's their call? Not in that portion of the testing process. There are other uh, portions where uh, the sergeants as well as the command staff get to do a merit-based uh, point system. Uh, which is uh, based off the last three years of evaluations and feedback from the command staff as well as the supervisors. And then there's also seniority. Uh, so they get a certain number of points over up to 10 uh, points uh, for the amount of years of service that they have. Ours is very similar. We just contractually are obligated to do it this way and it's also with the rules of the police and fire commission 80 percent of the 100 points so 80 points are based on the written test which is 40 and then the assessment center so the assessment center it's so expensive because it's a, a multi-day process and what they do for evaluation is they run them each person through two different exercises and one per uh, so we had 10 people test nine tests last Nine or, nine or ten tests. So it was the at the assessment, they sit down and they have a tactical exercise. So they actually run a, a scenario and they run command and then they get graded on that. And then they also run like a staff meeting or a coaching exercise and, and they're looking for things like do they support management, all, the, all those things. So that they actually grade them independently and like Chief said, it's independent. It um, If one of the chiefs or one of the assessors know anybody then they don't the the testing agency won't let them come and assess there so i did get uh two bids for that because i looked at cops and fire we had used rma probably the last three or four times and we'd generally been happy they do a really good job and just to make sure that they were um close on price uh, both companies estimated about twelve thousand dollars for that and the invoice came in a little under that Just one more thing to add, uh, uh, Chief Shadle touched on it. It, it is kind of dependent on how many people test as well, so. Thank you. Um, and then I had one for Director Countryman. Um, page, <coughs> page 19, R&R &R Maintenance um, Electrical Inspector for 1673. I, um, I was under the impression we just had like a couple retirees to do our plumbing and electrical inspectors um, are in our maintenance. Is that a, a company? That's for our electrical inspector. That's his monthly salary. Okay. And Anderson, page 23. Uh, loss and products, um, miscellaneous fasteners, and um, I guess hydraulic hoses for $8,114.35. Yes, that's for the, uh, the hose that actually lets us build our own hose kits. It's for the, um, uh, to be able to put the ends to cut them. Uh, we had used, we've utilized two different contractors or area suppliers in the past. Both of them have closed up shop now. And uh, so now we can do them all in-house uh, with the products that we got through Lawson. Okay, because I, I just, I noticed on the previous page 22, um, there was two entries for Hydraulic Supply Company, 393 and 568 for, um, hydraulic hose assemblies, I guess. Um, so that's why I was just confused at why that was such a high number for over yeah, $8,000. Yeah, it's, typically it's nowhere near that, but now this is the actual machine that lets us do our assemblies in-house. So we still have to buy supplies and stuff for that, but we can make them our own now. Okay, thank you for that. And then I had one on page 35 under capital projects. Um, I was just wondering what Cordray Brothers um, it's listed under miscellaneous for $8,565.07. That would be for sand, gravel, stuff that we use in-house, the supplies. We just paid for it out of capital as, as opposed to a line item expense. 
That's the capital that would be probably for the public improvement fund, I would guess? Or is that just capital? Capital, 40, okay. 41, yeah, capital. I'd have to look for specific to see what project that was tied to, but that's what it's for, materials and concrete. So, so do we just get that as needed, or do we, um, like, get bulks of that and store it and then use it? Uh, we do both. We do as needed if we have a specific project that will come up that way, or if we have, we both water and sewer and street maintain stockpiles down at the street department yards, and as we utilize those, then we'll go fill those, usually typically on rainy days or off days. Thank you. I'm happy for the opportunity to go through these. I learned a lot. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion on the floor then uh, and a second. Uh, that motion being approval of the general and special fund expenditures in the amount of $2,482,545.76. All those in favor uh, will, when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay as the clerk calls the roll, please. Albertini? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Mulhall? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Nine in favor? Motion passed, thank you. And then also, we would have water and sewer fund expenditures in the amount of $336,072.91. Uh, that is also in your packet uh, for review. And if I could have a motion to that effect, please. Thank you. Motion by Alderwoman Frank and a second. Second by Alderman McGee. Thank you. Um, if there's any questions uh, regarding the expenditures, we'll hear them now. Okay, seeing none, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of water and sewer expenditures in the amount of $336,072.91 will, when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay? As the clerk calls a roll, please. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Mulhall? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Nine in favor. Okay, motion passed, thank you. And item eight, committee reports and minutes of city officers. Uh, for the record, items A through H have been placed on file at the city, city clerk's office. And item I, if I could have a motion to approve the minutes of the committee of the whole, uh, building planning zoning and public works of March 11th, 2024. Motion by Alderman Fleury and a second by Alderman Snow. Any discussion, any correction, any concerns on those minutes? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And if there's any opposed, get motion passed, thank you. And we have item nine on the next page. which is for a second reading this evening, uh, that, being, that being an ordinance amending section 114-231 and appendix A of the Belvedere Municipal Code to modify water and sewer rates. Uh, if I could have a motion to that effect, please. Motion by Alderman McGee, second by Alderwoman, Alderwoman Frank, thank you. And uh, I think Brent, uh, Mr. Anderson, Director Anderson, had placed a um, memo or um, some information regarding what that, how that plays uh, out uh, regarding uh, the increase. Mr. Anderson? Yeah, just a copy of what was back in the packet for, the, for committee and council prior to the development of the ordinance. Uh, just outlining where we're at balance-wise and uh, the increase, the phase, first step of the increase on this water side is proposed to be 15 cents per 100 cubic feet, which if passed will result in um, um, an increase of about $1.20 per month or four cents a day on the sanitary sewer side. Um, and that's, um, again, the first phase on the sewer side 
will be a 20 cent per 100 cubic feet um, increase or $1.60 um, per month on that. So um, total combined of phase one, uh, if council approves this ordinance, would be $33.60 a year for <coughs> water and sewer rates as an increase. Okay. All right, uh, we have motion on the floor. Is there any questions? Any questions for uh, Mr. Anderson or anybody else? Alderwoman Gramkowski. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this takes care of the deficit. Do you anticipate anything in the future? And if so, when? Well, this will take, this will be the first step in that. Uh, if you go back to the memo, um, copy Andrew Dester's recommended for the next step of the increase, uh, approximately about six months uh, throughout the, the year. And then that's on the both water and sewer. And then on the sewer side, again, in the memo is a third increase that's going to be required um, and that's going to be based on what the final cost is and what our payback obligation will be on our 2018 wastewater treatment plant loan project that is uh, finishing up at this time so once that once those are in place if those are all in place that should bring us back to where hopefully we should be uh, based on based on water usage and consumption uh, hopefully, um, as everybody hopes, uh, Stellantis will be back up and running sooner than later um, because that's a big, a big hit on our system. So if that happens, as well as the increased activity that we're seeing with those, um, then I would foresee no increases in the near term as far as that goes. There's always things that come up. Um, I'll fill you in with more details at our next committee meeting about uh, the sanitary sewer issue that 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 uh, came to light uh, the end of last week that's going to require some emergency repairs. So barring any of that kind of stuff going on, uh, we should be in good shape uh, for the near term. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Albertini. Thank you, Mayor. I have one quick question, Brent. Why are we doing this in two stages instead of just all at once? Uh, typically in the past, we've done that to, to, to so it doesn't hit everybody up front. We could certainly do that. Council's desire, but my experience has been in the past uh, with the rate increases, we've always phased them in uh, over the season, and that seems to be better receptive. Okay, thank you. Okay. I had asked uh, Mr. Anderson to, uh, as well uh, to stagger these. Um, you know, I think it is, uh, he, he did bring up a good point that uh, with Stellantis being not using anything. It doesn't work in the city of Belvedere's favor. Uh, we have uh, abundance of water and we would like to sell it. When we sell it to big users, obviously we have a economic, uh, it makes a huge, uh, it shows that our economy is, is sound. Uh, when we lose one uh, or when they idle, then it also shows that, uh, you know, we are not uh, selling as much water. Uh, the big uh, sales, uh, DFA, uh, Dean uh, um, Dairy Farmers of America, and of course Stellantis are our two biggest users. And uh, as soon as I do believe uh, Stellantis comes on board, I think that uh, that picture will probably clear up not only in the short term but in the long term. So unfortunately uh, we do have to supply uh, water, we do have to supply maintenance, we do have to, uh, when you flush the toilet and you turn the spigot on, uh, we do have to be able to provide water and sewer. And uh, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been probably, you could say a very good time, but um, I think this is the best way to, to deal with it. And in the future, I believe it gets better. Any other questions? Uh, any other concerns? Okay, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the amendment or the motion on the floor uh, for ordinance 664H, that being an ordinance amending section 114-231 and appendix A of the Belvedere Municipal Code to modify water and sewer rates will, when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay as the clerk calls the roll, please. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Nay. Graham Kowski? Nay. McGee? Aye. Mulhall? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Nay. Flurry? Aye. 
Six in favor. Does that make it? Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, item 10, new business. We have. Well, I, I take that back. What do you have? Oh, never mind. Six in favor? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. We have uh, item 10, new business, item A, uh, ordinance 665H, that is for first reading this evening, uh, and ordinance budgeting for all corporate purposes for the city of Belvedere, uh, Boone County, Illinois, for, our, for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2024, and ending April 30th, 2025. Uh, that will be back in front of the council uh, for a second reading. We have item B, ordinance 666H uh, for a first reading, that being an ordinance granting a special use to allow a mural within the Central Business District located at 315 South State Street. And again, that will be back to the council uh, for a second reading in two weeks. We have item C, ordinance 667H for first reading this evening that being an ordinance amending section 110-91 for stop streets of the city of Belvedere, of Belvedere Municipal Code to add Franklin Street and, at West Perry Street and West Perry Street at King Street as stop streets. Again, that will be back for second reading in two weeks. We have item D, ordinance 66H, 66H for first reading, that being an ordinance amending article two regarding refuse collectors and collection of Chapter 94, Solid Waste of the City of Belvedere Municipal Code, and authorizing the execution of a residential solid waste disposal agreement. That will be back in two weeks. Uh, we have ordinance, we have item E, ordinance 669H as a first reading uh, tonight as well. That being an ordinance vacating an abandoned portion of Irene Road in the city of Belvedere. And again, that will be back to you in two weeks. Item F, we have resolution 2024-4, that being a resolution directing the planning department to publish the zoning map of the city of Belvedere. And I would uh, need a motion uh, to that effect if you so desire. Make that motion. motion by Alderman Fleury, thank you. And second by Alderwoman Mohal, thank you. Any questions, uh, any comments, any concerns regarding the motion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor then, will when their name is called answer aye. Any opposed nay as the clerk calls the roll, please. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Mohal? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Nine in favor. Motion passed, thank you. And moving on, we have motions forwarded from Committee of the Whole, dated February 26, 2024, 20, and March 11th, 2024. Motions out of committee, motions out of public safety. Chairman Flurry? Thank you, Mayor. A, motion to approve the street closure request from the Belvedere Area Chamber of Commerce for State Street from Lincoln Avenue to First Street as well as Logan Avenue between State and Main Street and First Street from State to Garfield Avenue on Friday, December 6, 2024 between 3 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. for Hometown Christmas. Okay, thank you. And we have uh, that motion out of committee. Is there any discussion, any questions regarding the motion on the floor? Okay. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, uh, will when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay? As the clerk calls the roll, please. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Mulhall? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Nine in favor? Okay, motion passed. Uh, thank you, Chairman Flurry. Uh, we'll move to a motion out of Public Works, uh, Chairman Snow. 
Thank you, Your Honor. B, motion to enter in an agreement with the compliance engine by Bryce here to, the ma to manage our backflow program. Okay, thank you. We have that motion out of committee. Uh, if there's any questions uh, or comments regarding the motion out of committee. Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Snow. Just for public, um, any public knowledge, this is for the um, fire, fire, anything that needed the uh, inspections on um, sprinklers, we'll say. It's for backfill prevention devices. And currently there's a thousand and four of them that we have to track throughout the city. And this uh, basically, Bricer will do that on our behalf going forward. And these are both uh, commercial and residential, correct, uh, Director? Everybody that has a backfill device, correct. Thank you. All right, uh, we have that motion uh, out of committee. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion Will, when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay as the clerk calls the roll, please. Mickey? Aye. Mohal? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. Nine in favor. Okay, thank you. That's all, uh, Chairman Snow, that's all we have. Uh, and we'll flip the last page, motions, uh, motions of Finance and Personnel, uh, Chairwoman Frank. Thank you, Mayor. Motion to accept grant funds from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity in the amount of $1 million for work related to the rehabilitation and expansion of Municipal Parking Lot 7, radios for the police department and concrete barriers for use by the street department and to authorize the Mayor and Finance Director to execute any documentation necessary to facilitate the receipt of grant funds. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's any questions or comments, uh, feel free to ask. Okay. Hearing none, thank you. All those in favor uh, of the motion on the floor will, when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay as the clerk calls the roll, please. Mulhall? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Fleury? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Nine in favor. Okay, thank you. Um, before we move off of that, I, uh, I just wanted to ask the finance director. Now that was, um, those were funds that were, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Alderman Stout, or uh, Alderman, I just demoted him. Uh, Senator, excuse me, Senator Stottleman, uh, correct? That's correct. And uh, you know, so I guess I'm, I am grateful uh, for anybody that wants to help the city. This, these are tough economic times for us. A uh, million dollars uh, goes a long way. The municipal parking lot, I think when it's done, will help our downtown businesses. Uh, the radios for the police department are essential as well for public safety, along with the concrete barriers uh, for use by the uh, street department uh, so that we can uh, provide as much as we possibly can regarding uh, the route, uh, parade route that somebody may decide to enter. And we've seen how that can work. I think it was Waukesha, Wisconsin, that had, a, had an individual that uh, ended up crashing the parade, uh, Christmas parade. And uh, so I think these are all great uh, needs uh, for the city of Belvedere, uh, particularly for public safety and, and also for downtown. So uh, publicly, I want to thank uh, Senator Stottleman. Uh, I appreciate the help. We appreciate the help. Uh, item D, uh, Chairwoman F uh, Frank. Thank you, and Mayor. Motion to accept grant funds from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity in the amount of $1 million to be used by Midwest Refrigerated Services towards the racking system in the facility currently under construction on Irene Road and to authorize the Mayor and Finance Director to ex execute any documentation necessary to facilitate the receipt of grant funds including but not limited to a participation agreement between the city and Midwest Refrigerated 
Services LLC. Okay. Thank you, Chairwoman Frank. Uh, any questions, any comments regarding the motion out of committee? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion will, when their name is called, answer aye. Any opposed nay as the clerk calls the roll, please. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Mulhall? Aye. Nine in favor? Motion passed, and uh, as long as I want to, uh, as long as I am able to uh, accept help, um, I wanted to thank um, DCEO, but I also wanted to thank um, Governor Pritzker. Uh, I think this came down to, as I had said before, down to uh, although we had been dealing, we had started this process, um, Finance Director Hansen, along with uh, uh, Public Works Director Anderson, City Attorney, um, we had dealt with this since August, and it came down to actually uh, the Wednesday before Friday's deadline for them to either make a decision whether or not they wanted to, whether or not uh, it was going to be feasible for them to locate in City of Belvedere or go north uh, to, to uh, Wisconsin. Uh, with the staff's help, uh, everybody's help, and uh, with um, Governor Pritzker's help, uh, we were able to secure uh, that uh, million dollars uh, certainly that was given towards uh, given to Midwest refrigerated services for them to locate their business uh, and jobs in the city of Belvedere so uh, certainly I'm grateful for that help as well uh, and uh, chairwoman Frank item E thank you again mayor Motion to accept grant funds from the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board in the amount of $283,350 to be used for gym equipment, virtual training equipment, wellness checks for officers, and stipends for officers, and to authorize the mayor and finance director to execute any documentation necessary to facilitate the receipt of grant funds. Okay, we have that motion out of committee. If there's any questions or comments uh, regarding, uh, floor is open. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion uh, on the floor will uh, signify by saying aye. Those opposed nay, as the clerk calls the roll, please. Stevens? Aye. Albertini? Aye. Flurry? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Gramkowski? Aye. McGee? Aye. Mahal? Aye. Snow? Aye. Nine in favor? Motion passed, and uh, on this one, I do want to comment that uh, I think law enforcement in general, I've said it uh, many times that I think they've taken an unfair, a very unfair uh, hit uh, these last two, three, four years, and I think uh, this helps to recognize uh, and show that uh, we need them. And, uh, I know that I know chief may have some comments so chief Woody yeah I would just like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Shannon for her assistance uh, deputy chief Wallace's uh, primary uh, responsibility is uh, grant writing for our department uh, and him and Shannon uh, collaborate to make sure that uh, we can bring grant dollars to the city uh, which allows us to get some of those uh, uh, needed things that maybe uh, uh, we're not able to budget for it. So I wanted to thank those two and uh, the council uh, for your uh, uh, support in this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hanson. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chief. And please thank uh, Deputy Chief Wallace. All right. Uh, Alderman Albertine. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Chief Woody and his police department for doing such a fine job. We had a problem over at Four Seasons. They cleared it up in no time at all. It was about car thefts and uh, break-ins and mischievous, and uh, they took care of it in a timely manner, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for that. I have no doubt. Thank you, Chief. Okay, that's all we have on the agenda. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn by Alderwoman Frank and a second by Alderman Albertini. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.
Anybody want to stay? All right. For the record, we adjourned at 7.05 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for your time.